the atmosphere is huge, it's extreme. There's a ton of energy in the atmosphere. And this is what we're trying to capture. What's the source of that energy? It's the sun, by and large. The sun is responsible for all of our weather. It creates temperature differences. Those temperature differences are largely what create the wind. We're here at the base of the Rockies. There's a lot of wind coming down out of the Rockies, coming right down the El Dorado Canyon. You can see that notch right in the mountains. That wind channels right down across this site and hits our wind turbines. That's why we're here. That's why this is a good test site. It's extreme in all sense. The wind speeds that can come down here, it's not uncommon to have 100 mile an hour sustained wind speeds. This is intense. Even just at a, a 10 meter per second of a, a wind speed, our rotor is so large that in that 108 meter rotor, uh, we get about 100,000 kilograms of air passing through that rotor every second. That's the equivalent of about 100 small compact cars every second. And these blades have to survive the kind of forces and loads that that wind produces. So how do we how do we design a structure to survive these extreme forces? And not only that, but to do it and have it survive for 20 years. That's where we start looking to, to nature. Nature has been around forever and it'll be here long after we're gone. And so through that evolution, we can learn from this. For example, if we look here just at simple blades of grass blowing in the wind. You can see the dominant wind is always coming from the mountains here. So you see that these are curved a little bit. As that wind comes, they kind of shed the load. They don't just sit there and just take the brunt of the load like, like most man-made, unnatural type structures do. By doing that and then installing this rotor and putting all these sensors and all this instrumentation in it, we're gonna learn from this. We're gonna learn from that step that we took from a, from a straight, stiff, kind of very obviously man-made structure to this more organic, uh, natural shape. And we're gonna try to collect that data, study that data, and learn how to do it even better the next time. So the introduction of the ATB technology was very much inspired by nature. It's, it's largely about exactly that, just trying to incorporate a little bit more organic uh, design into our blades. So by putting just a very subtle amount of curvature, that'll help us put a larger rotor, capture more energy, and still be able to survive a 20-year life.